Hello, everybody. Good morning from San Francisco. Uh, welcome to our session today. Uh, I see a number of participants calling in now, so I'll give a few, maybe about 30 seconds to let more people join, and then we'll get started. Okay. Good deal. So, hello, everybody. Arnobio Morelix here. It uh, started as a cloudy morning in San Francisco, but it's looking up now and clearing up. And uh, welcome to the Startup Genome uh, webinar series. And I am uh, you know, excited to be here with you all today to, to talk about attracting the best talent and international resources for your ecosystem. And then, you know, helping position your, your ecosystem globally in this global market, global collaboration, global competition for, uh, for tech startups, really. And as just as a brief overview for the agenda, you know, we're going to do some introductions, first about the webinar series, and then the, the speakers we're honored to host here today. We're going to talk about why this is important uh, in the context, context of your uh, ecosystem development. Uh, we're going to talk about how we go about doing this, how do we go about positioning and attracting international resources, uh, switch to uh, the ways in which we help ecosystems learn globally from one another. And then we're going to have Patrick, the founder of the next web in Amsterdam, talk about how they do this work and we, we collaborate very closely and they will share how they support ecosystem leaders on showcasing their ecosystems. And uh, finally, we go, we're going to hear from, from Najla, uh, CEO of the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center in the UAE, who has uh, been, been working with us and will share, you know, what's the impact? How does that look for them on the ground? And finally, after that, we're going to do uh, questions and uh, open questions and, and comments. And, you know, before a personal introduction from the three of us speaking, uh, I want to introduce the, the webinar series, which is uh, really focused on highlighting very practical topics for, for your ecosystem on producing sustainable growth. And, you know, we're going to, doing these things, we are also going to share how both Startup Genome, as well as our partners, uh, support leaders uh, like yourselves and, and peers and your peers around the world. And we would love to get your feedback and especially what kind of topics you'd like us to cover uh, and for that, please reach out to our colleague, Adam, uh, whose email you can see on the screen. In the past, we've covered, uh, we, we've recently started the webinar series, and in the past, we did a, a funding policy webinar to, to help start up and scale ups, especially during the COVID-19 crisis. And it was really great. You know, we had uh, VCs from Silicon Valley, from Singapore, policymakers from Europe presenting, Professor Josh Lerner, Harvard Business School, as a panelist too, and we'll, we'll keep doing and picking different topics. And, you know, as well as, as the topic of today, which is attracting the best talent and international resources, we always have, we also have an ongoing uh, webinar tomorrow uh, about the, about, you know, using what we call X-ray vision to understand your startup ecosystem. And you can sign up for it in, in our website if you're interested. And uh, in terms of personal introductions, my name is Arnobio Morelix. I'm CIO at Startup Genome, calling here from San Francisco. And as you, as you might know, at Startup Genome, we work with governments in over 35 countries helping them with their innovation policy. And today we're excited here to have Patrick, who is the founder of The Next Web in Amsterdam, as I mentioned, and Najla, who is the CEO of, Sharjah, uh, of the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center. And they'll be, be sharing their perspectives and expertise uh, a bit later on this session. We're also hosting this tomorrow at a different time, morning London time, with uh, my colleague Stefan, uh, Peter Paul at the Next Web, and Jay Gung Lin, who is the uh, Deputy Director of Economic Policy at the Seoul Metropolitan Government. And, you know, first you take a step back, like, why do we care about this at all? And uh, and the big reason is that the economy has changed dramatically in the past uh, 
15 years or so. And you see that in a lot of different ways. And we've really gone from, you know, a, a analog economy and industrial economy to a tech driven economy. And uh, that was already happening. It was a, it was a long-term trend, but that really got accelerated with the, the impact of the COVID-19 trigger crisis. And we see evidences of this economic shift, massive shift in many different ways. First, when we look at the value created by the global startup economy over the past two and a half years, that is nearly $3 trillion, which is on par uh, US dollars, which is on par for a GDP of a G7 economy. And this is just the startups, right? This is not counting the big corporates that used to be startups, but are, are massive now or are public, publicly traded now, uh, just the new and young companies. So it's, it's quite impressive. Um, and another way we see this is that if you look at the, the top 10 largest companies today, five out of the 10 are produced by tech startup ecosystems, all in recent times, you know, and, and of those, it's three in the US and two in China. And notice that for these five, we're not even counting Microsoft and Apple, you know, we're, we're considered from, from a previous generation of technology companies, but not really from, from this new generation of, you know, internet driven tech ecosystems. They were already big corporates when that came about. And, you know, that's the largest such concentration of any industry. Uh, among the top 10 largest companies, you know, at, at their heyday, telecom, computers, uh, which is, you know, manufact computer chips manufacturing, especially automotive, had three, uh, semiconductors had two, and, and this is, this is a, a, a truly big shift, and it shows up also in the way the opportunity spreads out in the economy. Startups are the number one uh, source of net new job creation, and this is, this is work I, I did in, in, in a previous role for an organization called Kaufman Foundation, which is a U.S. multi-billion dollar philanthropy focused precisely on the topic of entrepreneurship and education. And we see that throughout economic cycles, throughout crisis, only startups are consistently producing that new jobs. And you know, intuitively, the way to understand this is that you know, when a big corporate uh, needs to, to improve the stock price, needs to improve profitability, they usually do so by laying off employees. And uh, yeah, that's how they become more productive, more efficient. A, a startup that's doing growth phase or, uh, is the kind of company that expands by adding people as opposed to, to expand profitability by shedding people. And it, you know, all these shifts are, are getting accelerated as uh, in the current economic moment, uh, especially with the, the impact of the coronavirus crisis. And, you know, while this, there is this massive, uh, truly amazing uh, economic value creation and opportunity creation and wealth creation, sadly, it's still heavily concentrated. And about 70% of the total value produced by tech startup ecosystems is concentrated in the top 10 performing cities. And, you know, I'm from Brazil originally. And uh, my, in my home state, it's a mining state, it's an industry state, you know, we, we make steel, we, we mine different kinds of ore, and it's, when I go back to my family's hometown, it's really worrisome, you know, the big employers are kind of gone, and, uh, and we do not have yet, you know, this uh, uh, a, a, uh, a, a fair shot at the, at the global startup revolution, and, and this really impressive economic value concentrated. So Startup Genome's mission is really to break down this concentration from and coming from really two things, you know, each of us understanding our ecosystems and then learning from one another, the, su the successes, the failures. And we do that because we believe the success of your startup and the success of, uh, uh, of the products you build should not really depend on your region, your gender, your social background, your ethnicity. And we aim to spread the, the genome of thriving startup ecosystems everywhere. Uh, we started about 10 years ago uh, as a research project with Steve Blank and Chuck Easley at Stanford University. And you know, over time, we've, we've built out uh, what, what's a mix of you know, entrepreneurs and ecosystem builders in our team, combined with rigorous research. Um, and at this stage, we've uh, assess cities all over the world and, and that has become a truly global movement with 90,000 startup leaders, 300 plus accelerators, policy experts and um, 
and we use that to to support ecosystems on on their initiatives and uh you know to 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 focus now on the on the on the main main course of you know creating awareness and attraction this is this is really important for startup ecosystems as they develop as they develop because what we learned over time is that startup ecosystems evolve in a really predictable fashion through phases in in a life cycle and we've mapped out that life cycle model and at each of those phases you have slightly different goals but one thing that's true throughout is that you're always looking to create awareness for your ecosystem locally regionally globally and once you get to a certain point of development you're 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 able to use that attraction that that uh, awareness to attract resources um and and that's that's a, a key reason why it's, it's so important to have this uh, local awareness, local global awareness and, and attraction. The, the two ways that this becomes, um, that this shows up is that, you know, on the awareness side of things, this is super important because it energizes your entrepreneurial community at the local level. And the, the reality is, is that if people are not talking about their startup ecosystem uh, in the city, you're gonna have a hard time uh, attracting the university students, attracting people overall, uh, making sure that uh, people think that you know doing a startup is a is a legitimate viable option in your city. There are no, if there's no local awareness, you just cannot do it. So that's super important for energizing the community at the local level. Uh, it's also key for you know creating interest regionally nationally globally and long term the, the what it, we're really looking for is developing a, a clear concise brand that people can refer to and and that that's memorable the second way that you know this this importance of a uh, global awareness and attraction show is that as your ecosystem gets bigger you you start growing through attracting founders, talent investors, corporates from other places. First in your same country, then your region, then globally. And having your ecosystem be visible um, is is key for that. One of the the key points here that you know we see over and over is that when you are branding your your ecosystem and when you're positioning it locally and globally it's super important that you have a, a you pick a focus and, and create a clear narrative because the reality is you know there's not uh there's not an ecosystem that's mid-size mid uh even large larger that can compete across you know the top of mind ecosystems in every subsector in every category right like you cannot possibly compete with uh silicon valley london beijing New York, uh, across every single subsector, but it could be very, very competitive on specific um, industry verticals, industry subsectors. You know, I think a great example of that we see is Frankfurt in Germany that has really created a brand and a perform, you know, high performance in fintech. Uh, and you know, even though they they do not compete with Berlin ac across the board, you know, if you're a startup in Germany and you want to do fintech you uh, you're seriously considering frankfurt they had the the biggest fintech exit of the country and they can make a very credible case that they are a fintech hub for germany and europe because they have a lot of bank headquarters and 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 now they're at a stage that they have had some success on that subsector so we work with them and then that's a, a key thing we do focus very clearly on on a, a a data-driven narrative that that people can can buy into and be excited about and you know as as you go about identifying the focus and clear narrative for your ecosystem think about the unique strengths that you bring to the table you know maybe maybe the subsector focus that would be the example of frankfurt maybe you have a particular policy initiative that's very exciting maybe certain programs maybe certain incentives you know start figuring out what those strengths are and uh, combining them to, to build a clear focus. At Startup Genome, uh, you know, there's five main ways we help ecosystems uh, on their initiatives. And um, 
we're not going to cover uh, all of them in, in any detail, but today we're really going to focus about the ecosystem branding, which is targeted at attracting international resources and driving global awareness. And the centerpiece of this ecosystem branding is the Global Startup Ecosystem Report that is, uh, has truly global coverage, interactive visuals. We have 140 ecosystem ranked, ecosystems ranked, nearly 300 study, 275. Uh, we have coverage in every single continent. And for, for our members, each of them has a, an ecosystem page, both in our website as well as uh, in the PDF report, in, in the print report. And uh, this, the GSCR and this branding campaign has, has three main um, drivers. One of them is this, these ecosystem pages where we feature the ecosystem and you know, give, a, give a window about your ecosystem to the whole world. Here's how the so uh, page in the print report looks like, uh, the subsector strengths, and, and it's, it's longer than that. You can see things like you know, why you should move your startup to that ecosystem. What are some key policy initiatives? What's the community like? And uh, you have you know, a counterpart of that on the web. And you can see on the screen uh, the example for Sharjah. The second, so the, GS, the, G, the GSCR and the ecosystem pages inside of the GSCR is one key driver. The second key driver of this initiative is uh, our launch events. So usually we do a uh, you know, in-person event when, uh, when uh, uh, the global situation allows. Last year, we did it uh, with the Next Web conference, and this year, uh, we did and co-hosted with the Next Web and the Financial Times the Ecosystem Couch Conference, where we launched uh, the global report and uh, and drove you know hundreds of, of media mentions of it, hundreds of thousands of views, and this you know uh, the most comprehensive, most Red startup ecosystem report in the world. Kate uh, Mitchell at the Wall Street Journal calls it the required reading for any entrepreneur. And you know, on these events, we have a global convening that's a key opportunity to position you in your organization and show your unique strengths to, to your peers and experts uh, around the world. A third piece and third driver of this uh, initiative and strategy are our subsector reports. So we're gonna cover uh, 10 different subsectors around life sciences, AI, FinTech, clean tech, cyber, and we'll feature the key uh, ecosystems that have strengths on these inside the subsector reports. So those are super important initiatives as you build a, uh, a focus for, for a focused brand and a focused narrative for your city. As we do all of this and like underline all of this, Startup Genome helps you prepare for media calls. You have you know promotional press packets, templates for newsletters, social media press releases, and you know we help you uh, on on the things you might need on distributing and and telling the story of your ecosystem globally. And one thing that goes together with those branding initiatives, which we talked about, is our global membership network. So every every member that participates in this branding services also gets to participate in our global member network, uh, which is focused on uh, ecosystems learning from one another and learning from your peers around the world. We have virtual member meetings, we have annual in-person meetings, uh, usually at a large tech event. And uh, this is like an invite only initiative that uh, where you can learn from global experts, peers and the failures and successes. One of the key things we learned is that no, you can only learn about failures in closed doors. People do not, people do not talk about it openly. The, the only way of learning it is in these, you know, uh, more focused, more, uh, more limited invite only events. And we have uh, members all over the world. And this is uh, one of the ways members use this is because, you know, if you take a step back and think if you're a corporate uh, launching a new product, a new service, there's no way you would launch a new initiative without looking and, and benchmarking with what already is out there in the world, what other people have created and how they succeeded and how they did not succeed. The reality is, you know, we see governments doing that all the time, you know, doing an accelerator by themselves when they, they don't have experience on this and haven't really talked and learned from other people on it. 
you know, all new funding policy without learning from what others have done, uh, without talking to them in detail. So this global member network lets you, allows you to learn from, from the success and failures of one another. Um, you know, in, and we do that both in person as well as virtually. Okay, so with that, so that's an overview of, uh, of uh, how, how, how to go about attracting and global resources and creating awareness. And I want to take a pause now and pass the floor to Patrick, who's the founder and CPO of the Next Web in Amsterdam. And he's going to share how the Next Web supports uh, ecosystem leaders and helping them showcase in their own ecosystems. Patrick, do you want to take it away? Yes, of course. Thank you so much. I put in my um, headphones, if, if the sound is even uh, better. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation uh, so far and uh, also for having me, of course. Uh, I think it was uh, not even two weeks ago that we were also hosting ecosystems together. Um, it was a great couch conference uh, attended by, I think it was over 1,500 people. Um, yeah from all over the globe so i think the topic that we're discussing here is very relevant and it has even become more relevant now that um yeah covid uh, uh struck um <clears throat> the world and that we need to find ways how to rebuild the economies and and and, and startups and technology is definitely uh one of those uh, sectors that is uh yeah, uh, able to help with the uh, reconstruction of everything. So it's, um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, um, yeah, uh, happy to work with uh, Startup Genome. Um, I'll take, uh, I'll, I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, I'll take over the presentation for a while. Um, not too long, of course, but here we go. Hopefully you'll see my uh, my screen now. Um, so yeah, so uh, as said, I'm Patrick uh, Patrick Delev, if you want. Uh, that's my full name. Um, founder of TNW, it stands for the Next Web. Um, we uh, have been around for almost well, yeah, 15 years now. No, yeah, 14, 14 years, almost 15 years. Uh, we started back in 2006 when, you know, the word startup was you know, basically um, almost, you know, kind of like non-existing in the world. And um, the, the world was a very different place um, when we uh, started off, um, yeah, playing a role in this ecosystem. And um, to get, to give you a little bit of a background on it, uh, we started off as a very small event uh where we uh we were hosting a, a, a small event for 280 people in a church in amsterdam talking about the internet and all the possibilities and um it was attended by uh yeah people from all over europe and also some from america and was super interesting and fun and we uh yeah we had a lot of uh, fun organizing it but we basically, yeah, it was so early days that uh, we were not even aware that a lot of people were working on uh, on digital. Uh, in, uh, and, and so we were happy that we could find even 280 people that were able to attend. Uh, now, fast forward to 2020. We have, a, we have a, a quite large organization right now. We have about 140 people working within TNW and we work with a lot of other companies as well um, as uh, par uh, partners. Um, and we're mainly known for a couple of things. Um, our, our media platform uh, where we reach about 10 million uh, readers on a monthly basis. We host uh, unparalleled events. Uh, obviously nowadays also uh, online um uh, our main uh, well we're most known for our flagship event as i told you it started in 2006 with 280 people right now this year we were aiming for 20,000 people um 
we're now going fully online um, uh, as it's very hard to uh, host an event for 20,000 people and maintain one and a half meters distance, uh, which is allow, uh, which is kind of like the law here in the Netherlands. So we're moving it fully online this year. Um, but there are also very uh, exciting um, opportunities uh, in launching uh, or in organizing online events. I, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, we have a TNWX where we basically organize uh, innovation programs for corporates and governments where we work with startups, technology companies, and our, our clients, which are the um, corporates or the governments, and uh, help with uh, solutions there. We uh, run uh, um, a large uh, startup database called Index, where we have over 250,000 uh, company profiles. Um, and uh, in the heart of Amsterdam, we have, well, it's, it's, an, old, it's an old sheet, old slide I see, because it's, uh, we had 10,000 square meters uh, for startups, uh, but uh, I think it was two days ago that we signed in a, third, um, a third building in Amsterdam. Um, so adding another 5,000 square meters to that, um, where we uh, host startups and scale-ups. Um, as you can imagine, COVID basically turned everything upside down. Almost all businesses that you see here, all, almost all business units ha have been impacted, some, some for the good, some for um, worse, uh, and, but we have yeah, we have uh, turned around our business quite uh, quite quickly, um, and what you can expect you could expect in 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 uh, the spaces in the real estate, for instance, what you could see is startups uh, needed to save money, uh, startups were going bankrupt. Um, this is set up in a in a way that is flexible for startups that they can uh, grow um yeah, with their with their business uh, but also scale down with their business but so far it has only been growing for all the startups that were uh, in our uh, spaces and now we had to scale down or not we uh, a lot of the startups that are, were in our spaces had to scale down and some even uh went bankrupt um so we um yeah, the formula uh, allows people to to uh, yeah to get rid of their lease uh, uh, on a flexible basis. Uh, we have been able to maintain a 95% um, uh, occupation rate there uh, because we saw new influx of new companies, new basically larger companies that were looking for more flexible office space instead of renting out five years or 10 years, uh, uh, 10 years lease for, for their office. So we're going to also do a whole new way of working. Very interesting um, to see teams are working on Monday with their marketing, Tuesday with their development team, Wednesday with their communications team, et cetera. And then also wanting to have the, that community feel and bringing people together on, you know, on the Thursday or Friday. Um, so that's what we're, now also uh, uh, helping out with. Um, then, uh, of course, with events, that was super interesting. Uh, I think um, our flagship event was planned in June, um, about, uh, yeah, about a month ago. We were the first large event in Europe to say kind of like, hey, this is not working out. Uh, even before there was one COVID um, incident in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, so the, I think the day before we, uh, we went out and said kind of like, this is not going to happen in June. Uh, so we postponed it to October. Uh, of course, not knowing that uh, this would take a lot longer than everybody was hoping. But at the same time, we, we moved, um, we created uh, digital events um, as well. Um, and we created a couple of things. We created the global boardroom in collaboration with the uh, DFT, which was uh, a usually successful online event attended by 52,000 uh, attendees from across the globe. All like all listed companies in the world were present there. I would say uh, uh, also uh, very high uh, high levels of people that are, that were attending. 
Um, we had speakers uh, from, you know, the public sector, from the private sector, um, and, and yeah, it was just an amazing event. Then we also did uh, five couch conferences on, on the next web where we had a lot more interaction, networking, um, where you could also visit uh, startup booths and at least um, uh, could mingle together as well combined with uh, great content of course um, ecosystems was one of them we didn't use the full capability of all the kind like all the online functionalities that are present uh, that we're going to use for instance for our flagship event but it gave you uh, hopefully a good idea on what's possible online that also triggered uh, some of the some companies that were viewing this um, for us to organize um, events uh, alongside with them, uh, some corporates, but also some governments. I'll talk to that a bit about that a bit later. So, you know, when we started, you know, TW, we started it from Amsterdam. I, I was born in Rotterdam. Uh, I will say I'm, I'm, I'm a Rotterdam person with an Amsterdam heart. Um, and um but we yeah we started this out in in amsterdam so that's where the event started and that's where we started growing the ecosystem before we actually knew that we were actually growing an ecosystem uh, amsterdam was also one of the cities that that uh, saw uh, very early on actually that technology is uh, was something that they should invest in so also from the uh, public sector and the government sector they uh, started to to uh, yeah to help and develop the uh, the ecosystem and we were working closely together with uh, many different uh, organizations from the from the public sector in Amsterdam in order to grow the ecosystem um, I think uh, Amsterdam uh, was in the latest uh, startup genome report uh, uh, the third um, ecosystem in Europe uh, so they're very proud of that uh, right after London uh, and um, was it was it was, I think it was Paris I don't know third at least so they were very happy with that um, and just for a very small city so I think uh, Amsterdam uh, also is kind of like a very a blueprint for a lot of uh, different cities in the world kind of like okay we're not Silicon Valley but what is another great ecosystem that we can uh, that, that we can uh, model ourselves to and that's how we kind of like got into rolled into you know providing different services to ecosystems across the globe um, because uh, yeah they were looking at Amsterdam and then kind of like who are the players there um, you know we have been uh, playing a, a, a vital role in that ecosystem and we actually had this uh, service already there so uh, people started to find us um, we've kind of like you know we have a, a little bit more services than the five that are presented here but basically it comes down to kind of like ecosystem marketing which is basically um, leveraging our media platform in order to tell the story I mean there's so many great ecosystems out there um, and I personally don't necessarily believe the, the winner takes all in this case in this uh, in this case I mean you could see, uh, you know, digital is is built for having a lot of ecosystems across the globe um, and, and people working uh, together, uh, remote and uh, and doing business together, in um, in a way. Um, but the story needs to be told, otherwise, um, yeah, uh, uh, you leave a lot of money on the table, uh, basically. Um, we do soft landings, uh, basically attracting companies that are interested in, you know, uh, setting up a new uh, office space somewhere uh, or setting up a new uh, company in a, uh, a different uh, city. Um, we basically bring them to cities and show them around. Um, the government innovation programs are interesting. We're now do running one with the Dutch government, um, with the ministry basically solving uh, uh, big problems. And then we scout international technologies um, for them and we put them together in a room 
in order to uh, work on pilots so that they can um, yeah, solve their solve, solve big problems. Uh, the digital events, of course, uh, something I, I briefly touched on. Um, yeah, we, we have been live streaming our own event since 2009, I believe, but it, ha it took COVID to actually go from live stream to online events. Um, but we have been quite good at it uh, and uh, working on uh, several projects at the moment that I can't really speak about all of them right now, but um, a lot of it is coming up. As well as, you know, if there's a great uh, uh, space you have available, we can basically take TW Spaces, the tech hub that we have built in Amsterdam as a, a managed model into a, a different city. Some cases I, I would like to touch, uh, touch upon. Um, well, we've talked about Amsterdam. I only have a few minutes, so uh, you can look it up what Amsterdam has, has done in the past. Uh, great city to live, to work, and, uh, and to start businesses out of. Um, but it does, uh, yeah, it didn't stop there. Um, we uh, work with the city of Barcelona. Um, we've been, uh, we're launching a new TW event there in 2021 in collaboration with ISE. Um, that's a really cool um, city of Seoul. Um, we did a video series about their startup ecosystem and have been reaching over 5 million people there. Um, in South Korea, in general, we have uh, did a, basically a soft landing program um, and attracted over 500 companies from Europe that um, yeah, basically wanted to set up shop in Asia and uh, brought them to uh, Korea uh, on a very, and yeah, a lot of them have been growing their businesses out of South Korea now, right now. And uh, a very recent case um, is uh, we're doing an online startup investor matchmaking event with, uh, with the government of Germany. It's really cool and very, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, something that needs to be done right now to bring startups uh, forward, to move startups forward and to bring capital to uh, these ecosystems. Um, the South Korea part is, is interesting. We have been working with them for almost four years now. Um, um, yeah, I have been, uh, as, uh, as told, uh, driving over, uh, sorry, a bit, uh, COVID, no, it's not COVID. Uh, uh, <laughs> we have been, um, yeah, uh, working with them on a, on a program in order to uh show european companies kind of like how you could set up your asian uh, company out of uh, south korea and connecting them with the large co uh, corporates in south korea bringing them over um and basically helping them set up their office there it's very successful we did also the video series and now we actually moved um to a running campaign to tell that story in collaboration with the Financial Times now. Um, and uh, we're now actually, maybe I skipped that part, but in 2019, the Financial Times became part of our story. So they uh, acquired the majority of shares in our business. So we're now a daughter company of Financial Times. It's really cool and uh, also opens up new opportunities in order to work um, yeah, um, on telling those stories about ecosystems with the Financial Times. So this has been a very successful campaign, uh, also very great to work with uh, the people in South Korea um, and work with different cultures. Uh, our team has been, uh, uh, yeah, doing very well uh, on that. Uh, sometimes, of course, it's challenging, but you always learn so much from working with different cultures, different ecosystems and um and i hope that we can do a lot more of that Great. um one hey, of patrick, the thank you things that we're well, working uh, on right now is um, patrick of course startups need uh investment uh investors need to invest their money as well so we're working uh we have a basically a boutique matchmaking event it's a digital event called hangout with vcs 
where we basically select uh, 30 startups and match them to uh, investors in kind of like, uh, yeah, it's uh, um, kind of, like you could say it's kind of like a, a The Voice type of game where, uh, where we basically go from meetings with investors to actually dive deeper into it where the investors pick their, their, their favorite startups to uh, uh, take it one step further and go to a term sheet, for instance, in order to bring that deal flow. Um, uh, hey, Patrick, back. one minute, please, because we need to cover uh, this also, also great, uh, with Sharjah, yeah? Um, uh, this is also a great way for the um, investors to um yeah and to basically network with international investors uh, and and also drive foreign direct investment one of them an example here that we do is with uh, with uh, the digital hub in, uh, initiative in germany um we dubbed it the startup games it's a, a version of uh hangouts with vcs this is going to take place on july 23rd Upcoming as well as our flagship event, as, as said, October 1 and 2, where this is a great opportunity for um, ecosystems in general. Uh, you know, it used to be that you would bring, you know, your delegation and, 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 and five startups to, uh, you know, to TNW or to CES or whatever. Now all the costs are basically of, of the, the travel costs, the hotels, et cetera, that, those are gone. Um, and um, also the cost of um, joining an event like this uh, have been, you know, we've, we, we've sliced our price to 75% or so. So this has become a very great opportunity to showcase a couple of your uh, best startups uh, uh, to a global audience. Um, and uh, this is going to happen on uh, October 1 and 2 and also to position yourself as a, a, an ecosystem where you can attract not only new talent, but also new companies. So uh, yeah, back to, uh, back to the slide I started off with, uh, with the service that we provide. I think, you know, there, there's a lot to be done in this sector. There's a lot of learnings that we have that, but also that you have that we can share together also in collaboration with Start Genome. So, I would say, you know, we love to chat, uh, see what, what works for you um, and um, uh, yeah, together drive the uh, startup ecosystem systems across the globe, uh, but also of course, uh, get ourselves out of this economic mess. And with this, um, I'm giving it back to Arnobio. Awesome. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Thank you so much for coming here today, present about the next web. We're, we're super excited about our collaboration with the next web. And, you know, you can really see the results, for example, with the, the initiatives they've been doing with so, and it's also an ecosystem we've been working with for, for a couple of years. And uh, the, the reach that the next web has for bringing startups and, and making our ecosystem visible for them uh, with a video, with their web platforms, with the events, uh, is really amazing and, and exciting. So thank you for joining us here today, Patrick. So now what I would like, to, what we want to do is uh, share, um, share about the experience of, uh, of uh, an ecosystem and an ecosystem leader that, that's doing this work now to generate awareness and, and attraction. Uh, and we're joined today by Najla, who is the CEO of the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center. Super excited to have you here today. Thank you for joining. Uh, start by telling us about yourself and, and about the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center, please. Sure. Uh, thank you, Arnobio. It's, it's great to be here. Um, and I really enjoyed the uh, presentation as well from the next web. Um, would it be okay to share my screen? Yeah. Thank you. I just find it's easier uh, when it's a little bit more visual. Do you see it on, on your screen? Yeah, it's great. And I think I need to just change these display settings. So um, 
Thank you all for being here. Uh, the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center, in fact, before I introduce the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center, let me introduce Sharjah as a city. Sharjah is one of the seven cities in the United Arab Emirates. Um, perhaps the better well-known uh, cities are Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And so we often draw the comparison that, you know, if Abu Dhabi, the capital was DC, and if Dubai was New York, then Sharjah would be the Boston of the UAE. Uh, it really is the cultural hub, the educational capital of the country. Um, and for the last five years, what we've been working on is really building the tech ecosystem uh, in the city. So we've got some of the largest and uh, most reputed uh, universities in the region based in Sharjah. So we've got that critical mass of talent, around 40,000 students, but we never really had a platform um, to support them as they built their tech ventures. Um, the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center was established in 2016. Um, initially, we, you know, it's funny listening to Arnobio talk, you know, I, I remembered our own journey when we first started, because obviously when you first start building an ecosystem, you just assume it's easy, you're just going to copy whatever Silicon Valley or some other city does. Um, and the first step we did was, you know, okay, we'll build an accelerator program and they'll go in one end and they'll come out the other end and they'll be... Uh, you know, tech ventures, and that's the ecosystem. But obviously, you quickly learn that there is so much more uh, to building an ecosystem. It's a lot more nuanced. There are a lot more stakeholders that need to be involved. And so our kind of approach has uh, evolved over the past five years. Um, I'm glad to say that uh, in the last five years, we've actually graduated over 113 startups uh, that have gone on to raise over $87 million in investment. They've, they've cumulatively generated over $63 million in revenue and have created over a thousand jobs. Um, the other thing that we do that's quite significant, similar to the next web, we also hold a convening event. We hold the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival, which again is about inspiring the next generation of, it actually has two, um, let's say two uh, aims. One is to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. So we bring in successful entrepreneurs from around the world, successful VCs to share their stories. Uh, but we also use that as an opportunity to showcase Sharjah as a city uh, to um, aspiring entrepreneurs and uh, entrepreneurs from around the UAE and around the region. And then uh, once, once the um, uh, sort of in inspiration phase is done, which is the on uh, entrepreneurship festival and the smaller festivals that happen during the year, the main program that we have is a Shara incubator, which basically helps uh, anyone with a tech idea convert it into an MVP, helps them find product market fit and ultimately get ready for their first round of funding. Um, and then, uh, you know, what we've developed more recently is an Access Sharjah program, which is more focused on established startups, Series A and beyond, who want access uh, to the Sharjah market. So that's what we've been working on for the past five years. Um, we're very proud to have been part of the Startup Genome uh, Report for the first time this year. Uh, and we're extremely proud to be ranked number one in the activation phase um, uh, of the report. That said, the exercise itself, um, you know, working with Startup Genome, and it was a super helpful exercise. I'd almost say that the exercise was actually more um, useful to us than the ranking itself, because it really highlighted some of the gaps in the areas that we needed to focus on. Um, so what we realized through that exercise is that though we were doing a great job at the earlier stage, which as you mentioned, Arnovia, the attraction and the awareness around entrepreneurship and really helping those early stage ventures. Um, I think we weren't doing enough to uh, help those ventures retain a significant presence in Sharjah. And so that's one of the things that we're working on at the moment through the Access Sharjah program is making sure that these startups that we're creating continue to retain a uh, presence in Sharjah and moreover, um, you know, the UAE is a, is a relatively small country, and so if we were to rely solely on the deal flow in the UAE, it's fairly limited. Um, and what, uh, what the Startup Genome uh, Report has really helped us do is to establish ourselves as a regional hub. Um, and so, what, in fact, just today I had a call with a great, well-known Series A uh, startup out of Egypt that's now looking to move to the UAE. They had seen the uh, press around the uh, Sharjah's ranking in the Startup Genome Report and had reached out to see how we could support them set up in Sharjah. So it's starting, although it's only been a few weeks, it's already starting to pay off and we're starting to realize that, you know what, we need to be focusing on the wider MENA region, on Africa, and really providing a, a value proposition for these regional startups to move to Sharjah. And, you know, part of that exercise is really, as you said, Arnobia, building the story around Sharjah, building um, the right narrative around it. How is it different to 
Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, the UAE is one country and what's good for Dubai is good for Abu Dhabi is good for Sharjah. But, you know, you do want your own a unique value proposition. And that's one of the things that the report has really helped us do. And that's, I think, our next step now is figuring out, you know, you said specialization is key. Um, and I think that's what's going to be our focus for the coming years. It's fantastic. And, you know, what I think what's... Um, you know, we're excited to have you join us today, Najla, and it's exciting to hear, you know, that even just two weeks after the report was launched, you're already seeing results, and it was, you know, the first time we, we worked together on it. How, you know, we talk a lot about global attraction, and then you brought this super important point, right, of like national differentiation, regional differentiation. Exactly. How has the, how has the report and the work we've been doing together helped you with that? Um, it's helped us in various ways. I think so on a local level, you know, no ecosystem is built alone. We're not good. I, I can't take uh, credit for Sharjah being on that ranking as the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center alone. Uh, we've ha we had several um, stakeholders who are part of that journey, whether it's the universities. We actually have two hubs based in the leading universities. We've got, you know, as I mentioned on the previous slide, if you see over here, our, our founding partners are all very well known uh, corporates uh, in Sharjah. Um, and then obviously we have the policymakers who are working with us as well. Uh, I think the report, one of the things that the report did is sort of just um, uh, catalyzed it a little bit. So, you know, entrepreneurship or let's say ecosystem building, it's a long and tedious journey. It doesn't happen overnight and you don't always see the wins. Um, and I think what this gave us is just a very visible win. And it really helped uh, the stakeholders want to get on board and to see what we could do to further, um, you know, that, uh, that kind of get to that next milestone. So on a local level, that, um, uh, that stakeholder catalyzation was really great. So all of the stakeholders were getting in touch and saying, okay, what else can we do? How can we take this to the next level? Suddenly everybody wants to get involved. Um, and that's, that was you know, one really helpful aspect of the, uh, of the report. Um, I think on a, on a global level, there's no, no doubt about it when you're listed among, I think you said 140 other cities or 140 other ecosystems, there's absolutely a level of uh, you know, credibility that comes from being in, independently reviewed um, and uh, considered one of the top ecosystems. Uh, we've, we have good uh, global relationships in any case, but I think this is just one of those, it's another feather in our cap and it really enhanced our reputation both regionally and globally. Great. Thank you, Najla, for sharing. Um, would you mind if I share my screen again? Because I want to put some uh, yes, information sure, on, sure. on the board for everybody. So uh, we got some questions throughout the presentation. If you have more questions, please, um, please share them. And uh, right now, uh, I hope you can see Adam's email for the, next, for the Startup Genome site and, and Peter Paul's contact for the next website. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So send more questions if you, uh, as you have them for the Q and A in the chat. And then for the last five minutes of our webinar, uh, I'll, we'll answer some of those together. One of the questions we got has to do with um, what's the data that we use for the global report. And that's a, is a really good point because Najla touched on that when she talks about, oh, the exercise of producing the report is exactly what that means, right? Like it's, it's the aggregation of, of the, the global databases and identifying what's happening. Because it's super important that, you know, I there's a city in the U.S. in the Midwest. It's about a two million person city, and they try to make their brand to become the most entrepreneurial city in the United States. And it's not New York, it's not Seattle, it's not Silicon Valley, but they were trying to say they were the most entrepreneurial city in the U.S. And that was really not. It's not born from data, and it was, you know, it it actually backfired. Even though they tried to stick to it with for a few years. Uh, so it's super important that, you know, as you position your ecosystem, it, it comes from like a, a, a credible, a data-driven standpoint, uh, an external reviewer, like Najla said. And we bring together all the key global funding and exit databases, Crunchbase, DealRoom, PitchBook, and, that, and some local ones. And that's the, we're the only uh, organization that's doing that for these reports. Usually people pick just one of those sources. And then we bring the other relevant data around, you know, investor activity, salaries, activity of uh, your developers on GitHub, uh, salary, uh, salary data for, for talent across uh, key global databases. And we, did, we detail all of these in the methodology section of the report, where you, which you can get at startupgenome.com. But the key thing is we bring all of this together to, to create uh, 
you know, one, the, the, the very precise assessments in terms of metrics, but then two, allow us to build up, you know, a credible data-driven narrative around your ecosystem. Uh, Najla, you, you mentioned something about, um, you know, what, uh, at catalyzing local stakeholders. And, and yes. I think that's also an overlooked point, you know, of the, of this, of the benefits of this kind of work. You know, now you have Charge Entrepreneurship Center highly visible in your ecosystem for helping uh, coordinate exactly. and, and coordinate action. Exactly. So how, how is that yep. going? No, it's going great. In fact, let me just touch on your previous, uh, the previous question that you were answering, because, you know, uh, you know, we had the same question. This was the first time that we did the report. Um, and I have to say the team at Startup Genome, I mean, the number of calls we had with them going into the data and really digging deep and every single time we wanted to go into it, you know, they had three or four people on the call with us and really answering our questions. And, and by the way, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie, there were some serious debates on that call as to what's the best way to measure you know, the uh, sort of activity in an ecosystem. But the, what, what was, you know, what I enjoyed and what I really liked is that the team was open to feedback um, and, you know, the, the, our thoughts were taken on board. Obviously, part of it is geographic, part of it is, you know, how much are they raising? And so there are different uh, indicators that are looked at. Um, but, uh, but I have to say the team was extremely responsive um, and definitely gave us some uh, good uh, advice and good tips on how we can kind of go about doing this uh, in the future or kind of how we can go about managing our data in the future. Small things like making sure our startups are in crunch base and so on. So I think, um, you know, there was some really valuable feedback there. Uh, on the uh, stakeholder engagement, you know, everybody wants to be part of a success story. And honestly, uh, like I said, for me, it was more about the exercise, but uh, I'm not complaining that we were sort of, uh, you know, uh, ranked number one in the specifically in the activation phase. I think we did a great job with the PR, to be honest. So we, we have our PR agency and they really helped uh, spread the word. And obviously we used our social media channels. So. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had a post on LinkedIn that had as much traction um, as uh, as that startup genome post. It it it, it blew up. Um, like I said, our stakeholders, whether they were policymakers from other cities, asking how did you do this, or whether it was you know our corporate partners saying what else can we do to support, or whether it was the university saying how can we work together so that you can run more programs for our. Um, for our startups, sorry, for our students. Um, I think it was just, yeah, like I said, everybody now seeing the results, yeah, some sort of concrete and tangible result, mm -hmm. um, and them wanting to be part of the story. I think it just gives them that uh, sense of belief, uh, and that credibility that they, that they needed externally, at least. Fantastic. Uh, that is, that's, it's great to hear, and it's, it was really, you know, part of, uh, you know, if we take a step back, it's like part of the process for community alignment, right? Like one of the key barriers exactly. for ecosystem exactly. success is dispersion, yep. right? People pulling in different directions without a shared language, shared agreement. So exactly. uh, it's fantastic exactly. to hear in that. Fact, uh, one of, on that. Exactly. One of, in fact, one of the um, uh, interviews that I have coming up, which is again, uh, related to startup genomes uh, ranking, is uh, what, uh, trying to understand what are some of the policies that Sharjah has instituted uh, that has helped it uh, rank relatively high in the activation phase. So again, people want to learn now. They want to be part of that movement. And um, you know, I think that's, that's always a win-win for everyone. Great. Fantastic. So with that, we conclude our uh, webinar for today. Thank you so much, uh, everybody at home for joining. Thank you for Patrick. Thank you for Najla, we're super excited to have you here. Share with us your experience, your expertise. Uh, it's been great. And please reach out, reach out to Adam, my colleague at Startup Genome, and reach out to Peter Paul at the next web, as well as Patrick, I saw he shared his contact on the chat. Thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to be in being in touch with each of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.